Okay, folks, uh, hope you're doing good. I want to say hi to our friend Mark. He's south of Houston, 100 miles. Got an outfit down there, and I'm hoping this hurricane ain't getting him too bad. There's a lot of folks in, uh, well, from Galveston all the way to Mississippi that are in big trouble. But anyway, I got a deal, a guy curious about calving. And calving is a subject that's it's very important and it's not you don't see a lot of u2s man nowadays you see most of u2s people crashing burning and roping steers and choking them down and all that and that's that's all wonderful but i think it's time to do something real and what i want to share with you today is that the the one thing that's probably one of the hardest to deal with is called a, a malpresentation which means it's not going to calve on her own the uh, breech birth is what I'm dealing with. And please understand that everybody gets confused between backwards and breech. Backwards means the two hind feet come out, which I'll show you in a minute, which is a no-brainer. Thousands of calves have been born backwards and nobody ever saw it done. They're just fine. So I've, I've you know, I've, I've pulled a lot of them backwards, but I know a lot of them are born without any problem at all. What, what's really going on is nowadays the genetics have gotten so good over the last 20 years that the calf should get up before the mother actually. That's how well it's been, that's how far it's gone. Because nowadays you can dictate how big a calf you want, how much milk she needs, bull, heifer, whatever. It's unbelievable what they've done with technology. So, but no matter what, it's going to happen. You're going to run into things where you have an, a situation where you got to be able to handle it. Now, if you're out in the pasture and you're horseback like a cowboy and you come onto something like this, you got a couple choices. Because this is a flat strap with some D's in it. And this is what I carry when I'm calving. And the reason is, is because most of my pulling calves happened when I was on the northern range. All right. Everybody's pulled calves with chains and everybody's pulled calves with hay string. Everybody's pulled calves with their bare hands. Whatever you got. I found that this is the best thing and I'll tell you why. It's because when you are out in the pasture, chains are heavy and they're hard to carry horseback. Now I'm going to presume you're not in a four-wheeler because I'm not even going to go there. Which incidentally, if you aren't a four-wheeler and you're trying to calve and you got a big problem, you need to go in the club box, look at the manual, it'll be written in Chinese incidentally, and there might be something that covers calving with a four-wheeler. I don't know. Thank God I never will. All right. The truth about this band is that when you put the strap around a calf's leg right above the ankle and you pull down on this band, sometimes you are pulling really hard. Okay, if it's hay string or a chain, which has been done a million times, it can take the feeling out of the front feet over time if you keep pulling with that much pressure on them. It can also put pressure against a tendon sheath. The reason I'm telling you this is, is because if it's really cold out and bad weather, which it typically is on the northern range when you're calving, if the calf is knuckled over or can't walk very well for two hours, that can mean the difference between life and death. If you have simply a strap on them that you can slide off and get out of their way, they can get up and walk off. So this is a little trivia of something that I think everybody should carry. Now I've made these, take them off of some places they put tarps over haystacks. Just You'll see it, all them straps hanging on them. Just cut them off with your pocket knife. And you can overhaul this and make it a cabin strap. They might even sell these. Hell, I don't know. The other thing is, is I'll get into it later if anybody cares, but when calves die inside a cow, it's not a pretty deal. These are two things that I always made sure I had. This simplifies a whole lot of problems to take it in, cupped in your hand, and go inside. And when you get to the calf's skull, you can push hook it in the eye sockets. Now remember the calf's dead. 
and then you have a chance of pulling that part out. Fishing around and fighting them for three hours to get a dead calf out of a cow is really hard, hard work, hard on a cow, hard on everything. The other one is, is that if you have a blade like this that you can cover with your hand down, you can go inside and then come back to cut the hide apart. Because we've all we've all been through this, and, and I gotta tell you, this has saved me a whole lot of trouble over the years. Alright, the breech. This is what this is the birthing track. This is what a breech looks like. That's what it looks like. Here's what a backwards birth looks like. Two different situations. Here, no brainer. Now on that note, I'll just touch on the backwards one. If I have to pull a backwards calf and they're straight, in other words, they're not torsioned, what I do is I have the cow down on her side. And something that always worked for me, because if you picture a calf with their spine and their neck and the way things are, and if they're straight, meaning not cocked, you can take a calf and pull it backwards. And when you pull it, just keep bending it around and drag it right over the bag, which puts all that embryonic fluid on the bag right up to the mother's head and there it is. If you try to pull a backwards calf out straight you're going against the spine of a calf and you're headed for trouble. Dragging the embryonic fluid across the bag helps the little one find the faucet. Alright, the breach. This is how you know one of the clues of a breach. That's what you'll see hanging out of them. It's a little darker than that. But that's your clue. That's the clue I've seen every time I've dealt with breach, which wasn't that often, but that's the clue. And what it means is that the water bag broke, the membrane hung down, and everything stopped on the other side. Nothing is going on because this calf is stuck and cannot make it through the birth canal, period. So when you see that, that's your clue that you got trouble. If you wait and say we'll give her a chance, okay, <coughs> it doesn't work. But if it'll make you feel better, if you're even thinking it might sort itself out, when you go make a circle and get around the feed ground, you come back and look at it again, you're going to see the exact same thing. It's just a little darker. So the point is, and here's a little trivia on that, and I know I keep babbling, but I've noticed that a breech birth, a cow being a prey animal, she'll tend to go hide. Because in her brain, she knows she's in trouble. It's a life or death situation, and they know that. That's why they're prey animals. So there's two things you need to know. When you go out calving, you need to be looking for something like that. And then... When you find her, if you have a committee, some help, or you by yourself, you got to get her out of the brush and out onto the flats where you can work on her. If you try to do it where she's standing, all you do is take five times longer, and she's already traumatized because you don't know how many hours that cat's been sitting in that hole trying to get out, and you can kill her from stress. So you walk her out to the open country, and in the best world, what's happened for me is I have to make a decision when I'm walking this cow out. And if there's a slight bank, I can walk her over to that bank and dally up. And she's stressed anyway, so there's not a lot of fight in them. Dally up, step off, take my rope down. She's laid down now. She's downhill about like that. And if you can fish that other hind leg out, tie it off with your lariat, now you've got the rope running down both sides of your horse's neck, 
the hind legs are out behind the cow and she's kind of set up where you can work on her. Okay, the bad news of that is, is it's a real hard thing to, to maneuver all around all that plunder in your way. So the highest percentage is to lay her on her side and tie her hind leg up to her front leg and then tie her other hind leg up to her front leg. Take the time to do it because if you don't, you'll find out she'll dig one leg in the ground and now you've got a wreck going. So it's, it's worth taking the time to tie them separate because you can't tie all four feet together on a cow. She's too big. It doesn't work. Anyway, top right hind, top right front, da da da. Now you can actually work on her. You got a clear space to work. Your horse is grazing. Everything's wonderful. So now she's downhill. What that does is it puts gravity in your favor so that with her body at an angle down, you can push this calf as hard as you possibly can, as far back in as you can. And once you've pushed it as far back in as you can, here's the thing that I learned that saved me a whole lot of problems. Is if you're on the ground, I ain't getting on the ground because I can't get up. Don't face a cow to try to pull a breech. Turn around and stick your arm in backwards to get a breech. Now, Mayor, come here and hold this thing's head. Mayor's a midwife. So now you've got this birthed canal. The cervix is completely dilated. So you reach in backwards, which allows you to do this. Now you can bend your elbow. If you go in this way, you can't bend your elbow down to get the hind foot. So you bend your elbow down and you cup the hind foot with your hand. Because it is, it's soft, but it is in fact a cloven hoof. And what you got to know is that you've got an ankle, a hock, and a hip that rotate. So now you got this leg stuck under there. You stick your hand in and you cup it and now you pull and she, you bend the ankle, the hock bends, and the hip rotates. Now you've turned that foot completely over. If you don't keep it cupped, You'll tear her. If you tear her and she hemorrhages, she's dead. She's going to bleed to death, the cow. Now you can take that leg, which all of a sudden gets really long because you freed it up. As soon as you get it clear, you put your strap on it. Now in the interim, Just leave your strap there it is. Because if it, if it has to move back and forth so you can do this, don't worry about it. That you can find. So now you got to push back again as hard as you can. And reach back in. Bend your elbow. Cup the hand. Bend the ankle. Pull the hind leg. Now you got the hind leg. Turn your hand over. Now you can take your strap and help her and get this calf where it belongs. Now for me personally, I don't, I'm not a vet. But here's the part I believe that happens when you're calving, frontwards or backwards. When you've got the hind feet out, what really happens is if you ever look at the bottom of a pelvis, it's rough. There's a ridge there, it's called the girdle. I believe that when you cross that bridge in the bottom of a pelvis that compresses the umbilical cord because that's where it is on the calf and that's when a calf changes from embryonic fluid to oxygen there is no oxygen when the calf is now a backwards calf and no longer a breech so that means you really need to get it out of the cow so you do what I told you about laying it down 
and you pull this calf as a backwards and right there as it crosses the pelvis it helps to put pressure on the umbilical cord which changes the deal now I could be dead wrong but that's what I think happens so now you just simply pull it as a backwards cross the bag lay it in front of the cow and after I've got it in front of the cow what I tend to do you know you got to make a lot of decisions but if you got a cow laying on her side and her calf is laying in front of her and you're there she's traumatized you can tell she's mad or she's nothing she's just absolutely glazed over so what I've been known to do is I will get her tail and I would untie my bottom legs and I would rock her up on her belly and I'd leave two one side tied and untie the other so now she's laying on her belly sitting up on her brisket this part here so she can now breathe and she can lick her calf and she's she's used to the rope being tied and it's all it is is insurance okay then I go away and I go check something else then I come back and when I come back I can tell by the calf whether she's loving it or not that's when you have to come up again trivia never ever ever approach a cow from the front always approach a cow from the back because as you approach her to untie that square knot you made all you got to do is watch her ears and if you line up with the cow everybody cow every cowboy knows this if you line up with the cow their ears cover their eyes when they're sticking out so she'll cock that ear which means she saw you so now you can go up nice and easy undo your square knot loosen it up and don't take it off and call it up and visit get everything released and then walk away you can always come back and get your tie down rope so then of course you'll have to check her again but in, an, in what I've run into with the breaches I've dealt with Within two hours, everything's back to normal. Calf's up, sucking. Everything's fine. Now, in the shed. So now you take her to the shed, or the squeeze chute, and what you do is different, is once you get her in a chute, you have to take her front feet away from her. So that her head is down and she'll be sitting like this in the chute. So you pull her front feet out from under and she's on her knees. She's praying. It's kind of ironic, but there's a reason for praying. So now she's got that angle again that I told you about. Okay, in a squeeze chute, if you've got the right kind, it will open up enough for you to work. It's all wonderful. If you don't, once again, you want to back up, do the same procedure I told you about. And then when you get the calf out, you can't drag the calf past her because she's in a squeeze chute. If she's on her knees praying and her head's down, if you have the kind of chute that will choke her to death, then it's kind of ridiculous what you're trying to prove because you're killing a cow. So you have to have the kind of head catch that she can be down without dying. A little trivia. Okay. So now you have to get this calf... And what I did, have done is that if I had to use a puller, which I hate, then I would stand on it and drive it down like this so that the calf gets pulled down to the floor this way. The biggest mistake people make is trying to pull calves this way. Once it starts, you need to get like this. Pow! It'll hit the floor and you'll hear it go bleh. Now you're set up to stick a straw in his nose and all the cutesy stuff we all do. Okay. As a rule of thumb, since you're in the shed, now you can take your strap that you had on her. And because of it having been a breach, just to guarantee something that makes you feel better, as soon as it hits the floor, pick it up 
and hang it on the chute. Somewhere to hang it on the panel somewhere. Its head will hang down and the fluid will run out of its mouth. Now you can do the raw egg, straw, whatever you want to do. I usually use just a piece of straw and make them cough. Okay, once they've coughed, then you can lay them down, drag them around, put them in front of the mother, take the straps off because nobody's going anywhere because you got her in a squeeze chute. Undo your rope off the front feet. Let her fall in love with it. Then put it in a jug. But that's the two, two scenarios I know of. And on that note, you know, something that always gets talked about. I've used horses to pull calves. A lot of times. But the way I do it is not with the horse leaving. I tie off with my horse about this far so you can see the saddle horn is here and the rope is lined up with the calf and then I push down on the lariat which is connected to my strap I hope I'm not battling too much here but I've got my hondu through there and I can work this calf or this cow and if it's laying down on the ground then I can get down and pull sideways and my horse just stands there He's tied off. That's what's called a broke horse. So I hope that shed some light on it for you, partner. And uh, I really appreciate you asking me something like this because it's, this is what's the difference between making a ranch work and having a ranch not work. As soon as you put a fence around an animal, you're responsible for it. If it's a, if it's a hamster in a cage, you're responsible. If it's a cow in a pasture, you're responsible. You can't just ride off and say, ah, oh, she couldn't, she wouldn't have it. Well, she couldn't have it is what really is the truth. And it's part of nature. It's what happens. So you got to know what to do when it does happen. So there you go. Adios. I'd call him Bent. He is. <laughs> mm -hmm.